era. And just, I don't know how to sum up how you feel as a Zimbabwean, having lived most of your life under Robert Mugabe, that one man, that one dictator, not just him, but the whole security apparatus around him that subjected all of its people to fear, really, fear of criticism of the government. I was born in 1982, and the only president I ever knew in my life was President Robert Mugabe. And I dreamt about this day. And now, my only words of advice to the security sector is they should respect the constitution of Zimbabwe. And let us enjoy our fundamental human rights, and let us enjoy our freedoms as enshrined in the constitution of Zimbabwe. We did this together. It's not only the military. People came out, and this is what the Zimbabweans have done. We cannot just give the glory to the military only. Every Zimbabwean partook into this historic moment that we're seeing today. Zimbabweans in the diaspora actually sent money to transport people to come to the march on Saturday to be here today so every Zimbabwe partook into this historic action that we have today. Linda thank you very much for the moment. Linda Masarira there who is a, a political activist, a human rights activist who has been imprisoned and arrested and uh, beaten uh, by the Mugabe regime. Understandably delighted. Let's just listen for a moment to the noise here. Everybody is tooting their horns. It's almost deafening. I can barely hear myself think absolutely extraordinary moment uh, and let's just let's just listen in for one second to that noise so there we are extraordinary scenes that I'm all right, so those were images live from Zimbabwe where, you know, um, the president, Mugabe, has resigned. And the parliament speaker, Jacob Mudenda, basically told the house today. Now, the streets have erupted in jubilation as many have visited, um, are basically happy about what basically has happened today. Let's head on to the phone lines and speak to Todd Mafarimbo. He is a human rights experts there in Zimbabwe and he is live on Skype with us um can oh, let, let's first speak with our local person here um professor Vladimir Inchi Danso of the Armed Forces and Staff College he is the dean there and we have him online right now good afternoon sir good afternoon this is news just in. Finally, um, the Zimbabwean people have got their wish, if you can put it that way. The president has stepped down. What can you say about this, sir? Well, yes, uh, everything was um, showing that he would resign, or that was at least what the military wanted, because they didn't want to push him one way or the other. That would bring instability. All the military was trying to do was to safeguard uh, uh, the situation and make sure that uh, nothing untoward happens where instability is concerned. And so they were negotiating very frantically. And I knew that what the party was doing was to add uh, some kind of fillip to the effort being made by the military. So I knew that he was going to resign. My concern is not just the resignation. My concern is the transition. If it's not properly handled and it spills over, we'll have a problem. So the question of how to deal with a post Mugabe Zimbabwe is the most important thing. Okay. Now, Prof, could you please kindly hold on for us as we head on to Skype and speak live yeah. from Zimbabwe, Todd Mafarimbo. He is a human rights activist. Todd, good afternoon. Hello there. All right. So... You are live from Zimbabwe, and we've just received news that the president, Robert Mugabe, has stepped down. How is the mood in Zimbabwe right now? Well, I'm actually connected directly to Zimbabwe. I'm not in Zimbabwe myself, okay. uh, but I've got a direct link to Zimbabwe, and the, the, it's a, a mood of extreme jubilation. The Zimbabweans are happy. They're just over the moon. All the confirmations are coming in, and uh, Mugabe is gone. Mugabe is history. We, we, I mean, I cannot express it in any other way. Zimbabweans are totally over the moon. It's about time. Well, it seems that, that there were predictions by a lot of experts that indeed he would step down. Has it come early or later than expected? <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, it, it's come in time, let's put it that way, because okay. there's been a lot of speculation about Zimbabwe. There's been a lot of um, academic analyses. There's been a lot of... Uh, People trying to make all these educated guesses and calculations. I mean, we even had experts yesterday saying Mugabe would be still in power by the middle of next year. 
But uh, as I've always said, Zimbabwe is a unique case. Zimbabwe is a new era. It's a new dawn. Zimbabwe is unpredictable. And today, Zimbabwe has spoken. Mugabe has listened. And Mugabe has resigned. All right. Now, Todd Mafarumbo, you would have to um, hold on a bit for us as we speak to our local experts here, um, Professor Vladimir Enchi Danso, who is also on the line. Prof, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Right. So the wish of the people seems to have, you know, been granted. Um, earlier, before the, this um, resignation news came out, the vice president, who is currently not in the country, Emerson Mangawa, um, he basically told the president, I beseeched him to actually step down and let the wish of the people be granted. Where do you see um, Zimbabwe going now that this has happened? Do you foresee the vice president coming back anytime soon? In fact, that is the wish of the military. Okay. Uh, that is the arrangement they had made. And I can see him, I mean, acquiescing because he coming in when the president hadn't resigned wouldn't have been uh, a good thing. So he advised the president, step down, I come, I take over. And as I said earlier on, the military has um, saved Zimbabwe. It wasn't a coup, not a conspiratorial coup. That would have been bad. To what they have done is to exit Mugabe in a, a very humane and uh, diplomatic manner. And I think uh, Zimbabwe should take pride in that and not do anything that will exacerbate the situation. What they need to do is to think about what do we do in a post-Mugabe kind of Zimbabwe. And let me say, I think your earlier speaker didn't know what to say about Mugabe. He said Mugabe is history. He is not yet in the strong sense of the word. He is still a variable in the making and unmaking of Zimbabwe. How they treat Mugabe, how they trigger off positive or negative things in the uh, quest for a new Zimbabwe is what they should be thinking about. Now, prior to this, there had been talks about possibly him, President Mugabe, or ex-President Mugabe, being sent to the ICC. Do you see the Zimbabwean people trying to trigger this? Shouldn't. Absolutely not. It will not bode well for the transition. When somebody has committed any crime, there is no statute of limitation. Okay. They should put that thing at the back, back, at the back burner and allow the transition to go smoothly. As I said, he is still a variable. You trigger it and you trigger a good number of people who stand against what you are doing. Of course, it will be in the interest of the ICC that somebody has been brought to them one way or the other. But I think in rebuilding Zimbabwe, let us not trigger this now. Now, do you foresee... Um President, ex-president Mugabe, going on exile. Um, we know that he has some, you know, scattered mansions over areas like Hong Kong, Johannesburg, and the like. Where do you, if this is to happen, where do you think he might settle? Or opt for? I wouldn't know. And I think most of these things that we are being told are speculative. Mm. That he has the mansions mm. in uh, Abu Dhabi, he has mansions in Dubai, yeah. uh, Hong Kong, and other places. Fine. If these are places that he wants to live peacefully, let the Zimbabwe allow. But I wish he is giving some exile in any other African country where he decides to stay peacefully, or he should be even be allowed to live in peace in Zimbabwe without talking and looking after him very well. See, at times, peace is, is not the absence of war. And so uh, you, may, you may think you've exiled uh, um, Mugabe, but then the undercurrents of the quiet water may be there. I will believe that once they have succeeded in doing this thing quietly, diplomatically, peacefully, they should continue the peace for the next generation to, to get the obliteration of Mugabe's name out of their minds in the next generation, not now. All right, Professor Vladimir Intridanso, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. He is an international relations expert and also the dean of the Ghana Armed Forces staff. College. Now let's head on to Skype once again and continue with Todd Mafarimbo, who is a human rights activist. Uh, Todd, now what would you say um, with Robert Mugabe still being in the country? What would be the people's reactions towards him with him still staying in the country? Well, there's actually two schools of thought to that uh, because Mugabe. Um, he should have gone a long time ago. Uh, a lot of people feel sorry for him because he's an old man now, you know, and uh, they believe he's being used by grace. But when you look at the atrocities that he's perpetrated, there's still a lot of anger. There's still a lot of hurt. 
there's still a lot of forgiveness that needs to take place in Zimbabwe. So there's a mixed feeling. As much as we want to move past the Mugabe era, there's a lot of wounds that need to be healed. But we've taken the first step. In, even in his resignation speech, he has acknowledged that he has failed as a leader. He has acknowledged that he has let the people down. And he has acknowledged that for the good of the country, he actually needs to go. So it's, it remains to the Zimbabwean people to decide what's the way forward, even though as Zimbabweans we believe in forgiving and moving forward. But we also have to understand that there are a lot of wounds that are still wide open that need to be addressed and that need to be healed. So it's up to the Zimbabwean people to decide the way forward now. Okay. Now, Todd, before we, we, we leave you, um, you leave us actually, um, within the ZANU-PF party, how would you suggest reconciliation should be carried out? So, sorry, um, you, you Within the ZANU-PF party, the ZANU-PF party, with the disunity that seems to be have rocked the party, how would you suggest that it be addressed in terms of reconciliation right. within the party? We, we, Okay, within ZANU-PF itself, um, I think ZANU-PF identified that there were negative elements to the party, which they, I believe they've expelled. ZANU-PF is regenerating itself. It's preparing itself for the next era. So we need to keep them uh, in check as a Zimbabwean nation. We need to make sure that whatever they're going to do now going forward as a party serves the interest of the country. Because mind you, they're still in power. You know, they, they still hold the presidential seat and they are going to present a candidate who's supposed to be, a, you know, uh, lead the country for the next 90 days while the country decides what to mm. do next. So ZANU-PF needs to be kept in check and all those rogue elements need to be addressed. ZANU-PF is a big machine that has, you know, grown over time and it needs to be dismantled and then reassembled if they're going to reassemble as a people's party rather than an individual's party. Thank you very much, Todd Mafarimbo. He is a human rights activist in Zimbabwe. And basically, the breaking news this afternoon is that Robert Mugabe is no more the president of the Zimbabwean people. And we've been broadcasting live from our studios here at Adesanwe. Now, this happened earlier, um, a little uh, about 30 minutes ago, and this was declared on the floor of parliament in a letter from Mugabe, which said the decision was voluntary, and, and that was read by the speaker on the floor of parliament. And you're seeing images um, live from the streets of Harare, Ketsi, BBC. And it was jubilant, and it's been a jubilant atmosphere in Zimbabwe, as it seems their wish has been granted. There'll be more on News 360. Also monitor all our social media platforms and 3news.com. I am Solis Rose Corte. Thank you for watching.